It was Christmas Eve and as always, the village square was filled with several people. It was a norm in Ozala for the daughters and sons of the land to return home to celebrate the festival together. From the eve of Christmas, you could enjoy a lot of activities. Masquerades were always parading themselves and there were usually beautiful dancers to entertain you. It was during one of the dances presented by the young ladies of the village that Dozier, a young man who had just returned from the city, caught sight of a young lady. The moment his eyes fell on her, he couldn't take it off. It was as if something magnetized him because his eyes were glued to her all through and he knew he needed to speak with her after their dance. Did I also mention that this period was also when many young men met their wives. So your eyes needed to be sharp to spot a good one. After the dance, Dozier walked up to the lady who was standing with her friends and asked for a moment with her. Of course, they understood what was at play and quickly excused themselves, hoping to also attract their own suitors. This young lady's name was Erima, and just before Dozier left the village after the Christmas celebration, he went to see her parents to drop a drink, indicating his interest to marry her. Staying true to his words, he returned exactly one month later to marry her and took her to the city. Dozier was a businessman who was doing well for himself and getting married just complemented his life. He looked forward to a life of bliss and peace with Erima. But what he did not know was that Erima was not the kind of lady he had imagined. She would give him peace, but not in a peaceful way. The first week of marriage went smoothly with Erima trying to familiarize herself with the modern house and its gadgets. But as soon as she settled in, she felt it was time to start moving. Erima had always been an active person. She believed that as a woman, you should not be passive and just lay around for a man to meet your every need. And so, entering into marriage, she already knew that she would have to be active in her own way so as to contribute financially in her home. She wanted to have economic power and also earn the respect of her husband. So, she started off first by decluttering to make money. One early morning, as soon as Dozier left for work, Erima set out to work. She went into all the rooms and ransacked everywhere, bringing out those things that she believed were no longer useful. If she saw any electronics or equipment that was a little dusty, she would assume that it was not useful. After hours of scouting and gathering, she finally had a lot of items and she carried them all out to the front of the gate to sell. It did not take long before those men who usually bought damaged items came passing and Erima showed them what she had to sell. The men were obviously intrigued by what they saw and they started to struggle among themselves about which item they would keep to themselves. Finally, they shared the items among themselves and offered to give Erima 50,000 Naira. Erima was shocked. Ah, uh -uh. when did Iron condemn people start offering such money? Isn't all these people that used to give you 75 Naira for a whole fridge? So they have this much money with them. Eh? Anyway, this is my lucky deal. Erima looked at them squarely and then told them, Now 60,000 Naira you go pay or you leave them. She then tried to start taking back the items, but much to her surprise, they asked her to leave it that they will pay. Erima felt like she was dreaming. What? They agreed though. Just like that, I would have even told them 70,000 or even 80,000. But this 60,000 is a lot of money. Yo. She collected the money from them and joyfully went into the house. Erima was satisfied with her achievement and was very convinced that her husband would be proud of her. Dozier will know that I am not like all those lazy village girls. I did not come to scatter his wealth but to arrange it well and even multiply it. She quickly rushed to the nearby markets to buy some cow leg 
as she wanted to treat her husband to a sumptuous unkwabi delicacy that night. Dozio returned home that night very tired, but as he stepped inside, he noticed that his house was unusually rearranged and there seemed to be a lot more space than before. But he brushed it aside, believing that it must be Erima who did some cleanup and rearranged it. He went in and freshened up, but as he stepped out for dinner, he was surprised to see Erima dishing out Unkwabi for him. Ah uh ah, -uh, Oni, is this not Unkwabi? You prepared it. Are we celebrating anything? Where did you get the money from? But every man smiled at him and replied, You ask too many questions. Don't you want to eat? Dozier immediately sat down and devoured the plate of Unkwabi plus extra. Every man also topped it with very fresh palm wine. As Dozier ate, all he could think of was how lucky he was to marry a good woman. After eating, they went to relax in the sitting room, and that was when Dozier had his first heartbreak. So honey, tell me, what are we celebrating? Every man smiled at him. We don't need to have a special celebration to celebrate in this house. With me here, yeah, every day will be a festival. All you need to do is to pray for me to be successful in my business, just as I pray that you will be successful in your own business. Dozier was confused. Business? Did you start any business? Every man laughed out loud, clearly proud of herself. Uh oh, I said it. You did not even notice any change. So, we would have continued sharing space with unnecessary things. I just did a little trade by butter, and you won't believe how much I made today. Every man, you are confusing me the more. What do you mean by trade by butter? Which business did you do? A business you should have done since. I just gathered all those unnecessary electronics and equipment occupying space in this house and sold them off to iron condemned people. You won't believe how much. Wait first. If I just heard you right, every ma, you sold off things in this house. Wait. I noticed that some things are no longer in their place. No, mba. I don't want to believe that. Dozie immediately stood up and went round his house, checking all the rooms for his properties. And what every man heard next was a loud scream from Dozier. She ran off immediately to see what it was. Honey, are you okay? What happened? Dozier was on the floor now, crying like a baby whose mother collected his candy. If you call me honey one more time, eh? I will show you what bitter leaf is. Where is my double door refrigerator? Don't tell me it is not in this house. Please, just show me where it is. Every man was still confused as to why her husband was crying. I, I, it was among the things I sold. Since I came here, I noticed we don't use all those things. So I decided that instead of it to stay here and spoil, it is better to sell it off. Dozier shouted. Hey, when did you come that you have started selling things? How do you know what is meant to be sold? I beg you with the king of our village. If you know who you sold those items to, go and collect them, please. If not, the roof will come down upon us tonight. How much did you even sell everything for? Every ma finally smiled. This is what you should have asked me since now. I did not meet all those wicked iron condemned people that usually give you 45 naira. No. This one shocked me. They gave me a whopping 60,000 naira. That was where I got the money to make Unkwabi for you just to spoil you. I will still give you your own share from the money. Dozier could not breathe properly again. He felt as if the room was suffocating him. Isigeli, 60,000 naira or 600,000 naira. Chai, what have I brought upon myself? After dashing off my property for peanuts, you still used the money to prepare Unkwabi for me. As bribe or what? Because I have not eaten Unkwabi before, Abi. You sold off the things I was planning on taking to the shop to sell. Only that refrigerator is worth 500,000 naira. You sold off all my valuable gadgets. Who told you that any item you are not using currently is useless? See, if you want peace to reign in this house, just go and bring back my things and return their money to them. Every man was dumbstruck. She dared not say anything because she herself knew that she messed up big time. She took a bad financial decision this time around. She quietly went back to the sitting room. 
Chai, Irima, what have you done? Oh? How did you allow yourself to be used by those small, small boys? Hey, this is in summer. Oh. I need to shine my eyes so that I don't fall mugu for them again. But how will I get back the items from those boys? No wonder they were so much eager to buy the things. I'm sure they won't dare pass the street again. But let them continue running because any day I see them anywhere, I will beat them mercilessly before collecting the complete money for what they stole from me. Ndabundoshi. Every man slept in the sitting room that night. And the next morning, just as Dozier wanted to go to his shop, she quickly ran to hide to avoid having any confrontation with him. She was very ashamed of herself and knew that she had to do something no matter what to at least remedy the situation even if it was a little. After Dozier left for his shop, every man had time to think. She activated her business sense and thought of what to do to make more money in such a short time. She then decided to go out first because she would not stay indoors and expect a miracle to happen. She had her bats, ate and headed for the streets. She was walking past a busy area when she noticed a small group of people gathered around a man. Out of curiosity, she went closer and as she peeped, she saw the man standing holding a paper in his hands and announcing to the people to try their luck and win. Obviously, this man was a lotto agent. The lotto company was the type that if you put in money and played different show numbers, you could win items like television, refrigerator, air conditioner and even food items. However, it was a 50-50 chance of winning, so it was not guaranteed. As every man set her eyes on the refrigerator standing at the corner there, she wished she could just pick a lucky number and go home with the refrigerator. At least, that would appease Dozier a little bit. She had only 45,000 Naira remaining from the money she made and the game was not even guaranteed. What if she played the game and she loses? That would be double tragedy. But what if she wins? Every man was in a state of dilemma at this point. She decided to respect herself and walk away. But then, on a deeper thought, she convinced herself to take the risk. In business, if you don't take risk, you will never hit a jackpot. She then went closer and met the man. Oga, I want to play two numbers. Is the refrigerator still available? Yes, madam, all the items here are available to be won. Every madam chose two numbers and played it. She staked 20,000 naira each for each number and waited patiently for when the results would be called. The results would be announced that evening and she prayed that it would be before Dozier would return from work so that she would be back home before him. By 4 p.m., it was finally time to announce the results and everyone who had staked their money gathered. The man announced that out of the 50 people who played, only 4 people were lucky winners. He mentioned the numbers of those who lost and every man's heart shattered into tiny pieces the moment she heard her number as one of the losing numbers. However, one of her numbers was not called out, which means that she still had hope. The four lucky numbers were called, and to every mass relief, her second number was called also. The four of them came out to do a raffle draw, and two of them picked a 50 kg bag of rice. One chose blender, and when it got to every mass stone, she won the refrigerator. When she opened the paper, she could not believe her eyes. Is this how you work, O oh Lord? Just when I had given up hope, truly you answer prayers. She quickly looked for a van, paid the driver and brought the refrigerator back home. She was filled with so much pride and knew that Dozier would no longer be angry with her anymore. If not for anything, but for her effort to amend what she spoilt. When Dozier got back home, Erima went to apologize to him and then showed him the refrigerator she brought home. Dozier was still wary of Erima as he did not know what to expect from her. Where did you get that from? Erima smiled softly and explained to him that she was lucky at a raffle draw. 
Dozier was surprised, but immediately cautioned her. See, Erima, you need to be careful. This city is not like your village. You need to be careful. If not, people will use you to become rich. This lottery you played is the same as gamble. There is no difference. And you know how addictive gambling can be. Let it not be that I pushed you into it. So please, don't get yourself involved in it again. I have forgiven you. But don't repeat such things. If you feel like there is a need to sell off some things at home, ask me first before going on with the plan. Every man was relieved and thanked Dozier for forgiving her. They then returned to their normal lives and every man was careful to not make any error. One Saturday, Dozier had prepared to go to his shop when he called every man and gave her 15,000 naira. There is a dry cleaner along the street just before you get to the junction. Help me take the window blinds to him to wash them for me. They are eight in number. Just tell him it's from Oga Dozier. He will know what to do. Give him this 15,000 naira. Every man was taken aback. Honey, is this money for the blinds he wants to wash or are you owing him money before? But Dozier was not in the mood for too many questions. Please, just take it to him, Mo. It is the money for his service. As Dozier left, every man had still not recovered from the shock. She immediately went to get a calculator and started to calculate. 25,000 Naira. So if this guy has 10 customers every day, 15,000 times 10. Chai, that's 150,000. Monday to Saturday. Six days times four weeks in one month. 150,000 times 24 days. Eh? 3.6 million. You don't mean it. Ordinary dry cleaner. I don't think Dozier makes up to that money from his shop. Oh. And I'm in this house doing what with myself. 3.6 million. No, 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 no. I have finally gotten the business idea I didn't know I needed. I will start with this one though. I will wash these blinds and keep the money. Then go out and print flyers and start advertising to people on the streets. Since I'm just starting, I can offer them a discount so that I can attract customers. With that, every man went to gather the blinds and took them out to the back of the house to wash. She brought out a very big plastic laundry basin and started to hand wash the blinds. She washed and washed until the blinds that were naturally ash in color turned white. Imagine, oh, see all the dirt that was in this thing before. And I'm very sure that that dry cleaner will not wash it clean like this. Yet, he charges 15,000 naira. That will never happen again, as long as I am here. Every man finished washing the blinds and took them to dry on the line. But, even as she was washing them, she felt the blinds become weak and started to sag. But she convinced herself that it must be the weight of the water that was dragging it down. Once it gets dried, it will be firm once more. Immediately she was done with it. She left the house and went to locate a printer's shop. She asked the printer to print 100 copies of flyers for her new dry cleaning business. She then collected it, paid and left. As soon as Dozier returned home, every man presented him with the news of her new business. Honey, I have finally decided to start up a business and in fact, I have taken steps. Here is my business flyer. It is a smart move. I have done the financial analysis and the numbers will blow your mind. Check this out. Is the discount convincing enough? Dozier collected the flyer and he didn't know when he burst out into a deep laughter. Re re cleaning agency, washer of all washables. Trust us to wash away all your problems. A trial will convince you. First 55 customers will enjoy 1.99 discounts of the regular price. Come one, come all. <laughs> Wait, every ma, did a real printer print this for you? Or is it all those fresh secondary school graduates that are still learning Microsoft Word that did this for you? How much did you pay that person? Wonder shall never end. Every ma felt embarrassed. She did not understand why her husband was laughing at her instead of him to be praising her efforts. Dozier suddenly remembered something and asked her, Ahem, did you remember to collect the blinds from the dry cleaner guy? I hope you did not forget it there. Every man suddenly remembered and rushed out to get the blinds as she had forgotten it outside. 
but as she opened the door and walked in with the sagging blinds that were now white in color rather than ash Dozie stood up and opened his mouth wide in shock what happened to the blinds did that guy do this is he in his right senses every man stood proudly and replied him which guy were you not just laughing at me now when i told you about my dry cleaning business i have already resumed business and you were my first client tomorrow i'll walk towards getting more clients i hope you like my services i used bleach to wash off all the debts that were there so the real color could come out Dozier was speechless and slumped into the couch holding his chest every ma you have killed me my chest every ma what is this are you a wife or you are after my life please tell me i'm dreaming in the history of my family we don't have high blood pressure but at this rate i might just break the record for them every man you use bleach to wash my blinds which means you use your two hands to wash it shaka 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 as if you were washing your battery oh every man has killed me who did i offend i prayed and fasted i sowed seeds shebi they said that he who finds a wife findeth favor in my own case i findeth labor every man just leave my side because if i pour out the pressure in my chest on you you will find yourself in your father's house this night every man was frightened and immediately ran into the guest room to hide uh -uh, what is it what did i do again is it that this man don't want me to make money or probably he is intimidated by the idea of me being wealthier than him hmm that will not happen marriage will not stop my shine i must be big in this town the next morning as soon as dozier stepped out every man took her flyer and started to go from flat to flat looking for clients but to her shock the people were prizing her peanuts she collected their clothes though just to start from there she believed that once she earned their trust she would be able to enforce her price on them she brought the clothes home but unfortunately for her immediately she opened the door the power supply was interrupted which means that she won't be able to use the washing machine she then took the clothes to the back of the house and set out to use hands to wash the clothes every man washed and washed until her hands started to peel she looked at her hands and started to cry but then she looked at her side and saw the heap of clothes still remaining to be washed it was at that time that she realized that she had messed up but she couldn't go back now she had to finish the clothes and go collect her money it was when she finally finished washing the clothes that the power was restored later in the afternoon when the clothes are dried every man started to iron them and package them for the clients she then took the clothes back to them and collected her money she got back home and proceeded to count her money but then she burst into another round of hot tears she realized five thousand seven hundred naira ordinary five seven after all the stress my neck is on fire and my hands are red from bruises just because of five seven five seven that my husband can easily give me and those women even have the guts to tell me to come again tomorrow for more clothes i don't blame you people it is me that came to share flyer to you but does it mean that that guy doesn't make up to that amount did i miscalculate no now i did the calculation very well or could it be because he has a physical shop but i can't open a shop now those here will not permit me maybe i should just leave this business and look for something else if the one can be like this only god knows if my hand would fall off after one week of washing their clothes that night when dozier returned home and saw a rima looking exhausted as if she had been engaged in a marathon he knew that she must have been up to something and when she explained her ordeal to him he burst into a round of mocking laughter and almost couldn't catch his breath i don't understand you my wife are you allergic to rest must you look for what is not looking for you this is just two months into our marriage and it has been from one trouble to another what exactly do you want every man couldn't even blame dozier for laughing at her because she herself was ashamed on her behalf 
I don't want to stay idle. I want to make money. I want to be able to add value to your life. Dozier smiled at her, my value-adding wife. I admire your zeal, but I'll be honest with you. With the way you are going about it, you just keep on dancing around the pepper tree without plugging any pepper at all. I can see you have a passion for business, but why not start with going to school first? If you go and study business administration in school, you will come out with a better strategy on how to do business and you'll succeed in it. At the mention of school, every math fled up. Did you just say school? At my age, you must be joking. I should go to school and waste my time. Dozier, if you want to insult me, just go ahead and insult me directly. Don't go through the corners. Is it because of how many failed ventures that you are saying all these things to me? In case you don't know yet, I was born ready for business. I am a CEO. CEO of many businesses. Not just one, oh, but chains of businesses. And you see this time we are in, I will become a big businesswoman. I won't be under anyone and I will make money. Remember, little drops of water make a mighty ocean. Don't mock my humble beginnings. Dozier just sat there looking at his wife ramble on. Mrs. CEO, I did not know you had all these big dreams when I married you. Anyway, I am not stopping your dream. After all, your success is also my success. I will follow you and enjoy the money. But please, I beg you with everything I hold dear. Avoid me and my properties. Don't use any of my properties in your quest for business again. You can take your business outside to do. That way you will even make more money. Dozier gave Erin Ma this advice with a clear mind. But what he did not know was that he had ignited something in Erin Ma's mind. She would take her business outside and make it bigger. The next day, Dozier went to his shop. But before he left, he drew Erima closer and told her to consider going to school to learn better business strategies. As he left, Erima looked at him ridiculously. I don't blame you. It is because me and you are in the same house. It is over familiarity that is causing all these wounds now. I will shock you in this house. And true to her words, Erima shocked Dozier because that afternoon, Dozier was at his shop when he received a phone call from an unknown number asking him to come to the police station as his attention was needed in respect to his wife who had just been arrested. What did Erima do this time? Will she come out of this easily? How will Dozier handle this? We'll find out in the second episode. Thank you for watching this story. Please let me know what you loved and learned from this story. Share the story out with your loved ones and subscribe to this channel for more interesting story. Also, don't forget to give the story a thumbs up until I bring episodes to your way. 